Cape May County has adopted its budget for 2013. We'll break down the budget and take a look at new programs and improvements planned in the county for this year. That's next on the Cape May County Report. Welcome to the Cape May County Report. I'm Lenora Bonifante, Cape May County Communications Director, along with Freeholder Director Gerald Thornton. And joining us now is Francine Springer, who is the County Treasurer for Cape May County. First of all, Francine, welcome. Uh, this is the first time that you're here with us on the Cape May County Report. Uh, you've been treasurer for just about a year, and this is your first county budget that you worked on. So congratulations. How was it working on your first budget? Uh, it was a great experience, Lenora. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here today. Well, Director, there's been a number of changes uh, in county government this past year. In 2012, when you took over as director, um, you started to rethink county mm -hmm. government. Uh, you have free, three new freeholders now on the board, um, a new clerk of the board, a uh, new director of operations, a number of new department heads, uh, one of those being here with us tonight, Francine. Tell us about some of the changes in county government. <clears throat> We have made some uh, significant changes in, in the last year plus, and Francine is certainly a, a, a key part of, of those changes. But she should be recognized that Francine just didn't become the the county treasurer overnight. I mean, she has the she's a certified CFO. She spent a, a lot of years working in the county treasurer's office. She spent years working in in K May Point. So she had all the qualifications and all the education and certifications in order to be the uh, CFO for the county of K May. And although we say it's her first budget, it's not really her first budget. <laughs> she spent a lot of time as county treasurer. Oh, oh, yes. oh it's her first <laughs> time uh, budget as county treasurer. But she is been working on on the county budgets for for many many years so well now director you've said you rethinking and reorganizing county government why is that important and what <clears throat> impact did it have uh, and what role did it play when you were preparing the 2013 budget well one of, one of the things that we discovered uh, you know a, a year or so ago is that uh, because of the uh, restrictions that we have, the financial restrictions we have, that we had to reorganize uh, county government and we've made some significant changes. We have uh, a new head of uh, facilities and services because uh, our, our former director of facilities and services retired. So we uh, appointed Anne Marie uh, McMahon as uh, facilities and services director. Uh, first time that we've ever had a woman director of facilities and services and she's doing a, an outstanding job. She's an architect. She has the qualification certifications uh, with emergency management. Uh, uh, Frank McCall uh, was getting ready to uh, make some changes because he was nearing retirement and so now we have uh, Marty Palugi as, as the director of emergency management. So those changes have been significant but the thing that has to be done here and we've been working with, with Ed Grant for uh, the past year is creating those efficiencies because of the demands on county government, number one, and because of the funding uh, sources now have been reduced. We've had, uh, you know, a terrible time uh, in the last uh, four years as far as the, the tax rate and and the uh, things that we've been trying to lessen the impact so we can provide those services that are necessary that county government is responsible for. Well, in 2012, you said you've had to do more with less. Uh, departments were asked to do more with less. And, and then, of course, there was Superstorm Sandy. So the county faced a lot of obstacles in 2012. Well, Superstorm Sandy, and before that, if you remember, we had Hurricane Irene. Mm -hmm. So, so we have had storms back to back now, and and the, and addressing those issues is, is very difficult. So, when you look at the county government, and in the last three and a half years. Uh, we have reduced uh, our workforce by a, about 140 positions, maybe plus, maybe a few more than that. But that is the significance that you see. That's why we have to create those efficiencies. That's why we have to make sure that we have uh, our employees that are cross-trained so they can go into other, uh, other areas of their department and, and work in those areas so that we're not caught off guard. And when we have a hurricane like Irene or in this case Sandy, that we utilize those resources. 
the county government is the only regionalized form of government that we have. We have almost nine, 900 employees in county government so that when you have a crisis, you need those employees to respond. And that's what we've been setting up now for almost a year. We just had a meeting just yesterday on that very issue. So those county employees are really essential personnel that are there in a crisis to protect the residents of Cape May County and the property of Cape May County. So let's take a look at the 2013 budget and see how it prepares uh, Cape May County as we continue uh, with 2013. Uh, the, you recently adopted the county budget. It has a tax rate increase of slightly over one cent and a tax levy at 1.98% increase. First of all, Francine, tell us what the difference is between the tax rate and the tax levy. Okay. First of all, the tax levy is the uh, amount of taxes needed to be raised for the current year to balance the budget for revenue. And the actual the tax rate is the amount of, for this year, it was um, 20 cents. So that would be the amount per $100 of assessed valuation. And what do you t attribute this year's increase to? Um, this, this year's increase, of course, most of it, a uh, large percentage of it, uh, was due to the fact of the decrease in the rateables. Uh, we had, uh, just for this year, a $2.1 billion decrease in rateables, and uh, that has been a continuing obstacle uh, over the last four years. We've uh, had a huge decrease in the rateable base. In addition to that, we uh, had revenues that fell a lot shorter than we thought, and our fund balance, we weren't unable to generate as much as we had in the past years. Now, Director, when you look at the uh, rateable base, and it's gone down for drastically uh, for mm -hmm. straight years, and, and as Francine said, this year, uh, $2.1 billion. Um, when you look to the future, do you see that changing at all, or do you need, are you still concerned about the downturn of the rateable base? I hope not. But I, I can tell you, so far in the, in the last uh, four years, we're down $7.9 billion in, in rateables. That has a significant impact on our budget. Plus, we have a 2% cap on our budget, which I will tell you honestly, I'm in favor of the 2% cap. I, I think it's necessary for governments, uh, all governments, to have that restriction that's placed on us so that we can create those efficiencies that, that are necessary. But at, at the same time, when, when we look at that, we have to make sure that we protect the health, safety, and welfare of our residents so that when we look at programs, we have to make sure is what is government directed to do and how are we going to protect our citizens. And that's why we have to create those priorities that are necessary when we go through the budgeting process. And this year, it was one of those things. We started doing our budget around October, and we sat meeting after meeting after meeting trying to guarantee that we were going to meet our obligations to the residents of Cape May County. Especially in times, uh, you know, the tough economic times when you're seeing cuts in programs on the federal and state level, um, for the county to preserve the programs that it presents for its uh, residents is very important to you. It's, it's extremely important. Uh, Cape May County has the highest percentage of uh, elderly in the state of New Jersey. We're running about 23 uh, percent population 65 and above. Much of that population is low income elderly. So we have to ensure that those services to that low income elderly are protected. And I say this over and over again. If we can keep the low income elderly who need services, if we can keep them in their home, and we can provide those services in home, Meals on Wheels, a homemaker service, uh, home health aides, and those type of things. It keeps them from going into a nursing home, or if they go in a nursing home, cost about approximately $80,000 a year to keep a person in, an, in a nursing home and protect them. If they stay at home, it's probably about three or four hundred dollars a month. So that's mm -hmm. where the resources have to go. And finally, the state and the federal government are starting to look at that. The difficulty is, the funding is not coming along with that. But you have, in the next eight years or so, you've got close to 70 mil million Americans coming into the elderly population because of the baby boomers back in the 1940s. That issue has to be addressed because it's, we are on the edge of a major crisis now for the elderly. 
So, but when you looked at the budget, then you looked at protecting the programs for that population and making sure they're in place. Health, safety, and welfare of its citizens. Mm -hmm. That's our obligation. Excellent. And there are some things that we have funded because we were able to fund them over the years. Uh, some programs that we funded because they were they were nice to have and they were important to to the community or important to the town. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that resource anymore that we can fund those type of programs. Mm -hmm. And they're those those are difficult decisions, mm -hmm. but I, I say the same thing to my colleagues, uh, and this is what I really believe. I'm not elected to office to say yes. I'm elected to office mm -hmm. to make the no decisions, the ones that are really tough, and that's, and that's what we have to recognize. Now, on, on one positive side uh, with this budget, there were some um, revenue increases, uh, positive uh, feedback from the county clerk's office uh, with transfer fees. So that's a good indicator for the county. Oh, absolutely. We did have a uh, successful year with uh, the realty transfer fees. They were, they increased significantly, about 18% over the previous years. And of course, that was a huge help to the county and generating that revenue. Now also, one of the areas that we've lost money through the years is interest on investments. Um, <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> oh, so, wow. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So this year, there that kind of stayed the same, but it, we're still Still drastically down from the heydays. Oh, absolutely. We used to raise millions of dollars in uh, interest on investments, mm -hmm. and we're down to about ninety-six to ninety-seven thousand dollars this year. Yeah. So it's a significant loss, and I do not see that going up in the upcoming years. Now, what other major challenges did you face when preparing the budget? Um, health insurance—that's always a factor. Well, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that, that, that's a major factor, and so we look at the health insurance. But another thing that's coming online about uh, health insurance that I, I think the public should realize is that uh, government employees are going to have to start paying a percentage of their health insurance with this Chapter 78. So probably in a year or two, you're going to see a significant reduction because of the contribution that uh, government employees are now required to make to the health insurance program. And a number of those things, because they're contractual, we can't do anything about until we get to uh, a contract period and we, we renew the contract. So there are things that you have to discuss uh, when you get into uh, union negotiations. So uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. just issues we have to address. Now Francine, uh, the county budget for this year is how much? $138 million this how, year. How does that compare to last year? Last year we were at $139.1 million last year and that obviously was a decrease in the budget this year. It was not a typical budget year for the county uh, this year. We did have our uh, basically, most of our departments come in flat with salaries and wages and with their OE. Of course, we has, as the freeholder director discussed, we did have an increase in our uh, health insurance benefit you know, benefits. So that was basically where the increase was, but everything um, all in all came in flat. So it was an interesting year for, um, for my first budget. What amount of money uh, to be raised from property taxes will support the budget? Uh, this year we have uh, nine, uh, 96 million dollars. And how does that compare to last year? Last year we were at 94.6 million. So we're staying around the same. Yeah. I mean, oh, we it was an ER. the numbers. Was you, you've held the line on, on under two percent increase. Yeah, it's 1.8 million mm -hmm. dollar dollars increase, approximately yes. the increase mm -hmm. this year. Now how much money uh, was used from your surplus to uh, fund the budget? This year we used 10 million dollars to uh, add a surplus to fund to fund the budget. Now when you look at for the taxpayers, when they looked at it, uh, what will the equalized tax rate be for 2013? Um, at this point in time, it's, uh, 20, it is 20 cents. Uh, it's 20 cents uh, on the, for a, for, so for a taxpayer that has a home that's $300,000, it'll probably cost them about $600 in, in county taxes for them. And then of course each of the municipalities will be different depending on their equalized rate. Yes, because we're talking about the county tax, so when you get your tax bill, it's the portion that's in there. Yes, so not for, your municipal so, or your school. Mm -hmm. So for $100,000, it's $204. Yes, yes. But yes. when you take a look at, at the tax rate, uh, the county of Cape May still has the distinction, freeholder director. We have the lowest tax rate in the state of New Jersey of any county. Yes, we're very proud of that. And uh, we've made some difficult decisions in the last three or four years to maintain that. But uh, we, we have, and I can tell you that although it's been difficult 
financially of the many counties, the other 21 counties, or the other 20 counties in, in the state, uh, we are financially pr probably in the best financial sh shape of any other county. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk with the Director of Operations and take a look at some new programs in Cape May County and what we can look ahead to 2013 to expect in improvements in the county as well. So please stay with us. How far would you go to discover a new treasure? How far to stand on the edge of the earth? To step back in time? To be amazed? How far would you go to lower your heart rate? To heighten your senses? To breathe, really breathe? Your journey begins at njsouthernshore.com, New Jersey's Southern Shore region. How far would you go to feel young again? How far to capture the sun? To walk in the wild? To celebrate new traditions? How far would you go to just slow things down. Your journey begins at njsouthernshore.com, New Jersey's Southern Shore region. Welcome back to the Cape May County Report. I'm Lenora Bonifante, Cape May County Communications Director, along with Freeholder Director Gerald Thornton, and joining us now is the Director of Operations for Cape May County, Ed Grant. Thank, thank you for joining us, Ed. Yeah, thank you. Now, Ed, you're no stranger to county government. Uh, you were the county treasurer for more than 17 years. Uh, you retired from county government in February and came back as our director of operations. Um, we talked about changes in county government. Director um, Ed Grant coming back as director of operations is one of the new uh, developments in county government this past year. Yes, it was, and and like I, you know, Ed Grant uh, worked for county government for 32 years, and and I've known him all that time. I remember when he was a young guy and was <laughs> down the, at the airport just out of college, and he spent uh, 32 years with county government. He was the purchasing agent for many years, and for 17 years he was the uh, county treasurer. He retired, and uh, within about a month after his retirement, the uh, county administrator decided that he was going to leave and take a position with another organization. And so there I was uh, without a county uh, administrator. So uh, I made a phone call to Florida, and Ed Grant was on the beach in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, Ed, I need a favor. And he said, ah, Jerry, what do you need? I said, I need you to come back to work. And there was like silence. <laughs> there was just silence. And he said, do you know what you're saying? I'm sitting here on the beach with a beer in my hand, and, <laughs> and you're asking me to come back. I said, well, please consider it and, and let me know because I need you. And fortunately for me, especially, mm -hmm. and the county of Cape May, he accepted and came back, and I'm very happy about that. Well, Director, um, Ed is working with you and the Freeholder Board uh, to reshape county government. Tell us uh, some of the things that you're working on. Well, the thing that, that we've been working on uh, is efficiency. Just efficiencies and management and changing some of the structure around to make sure that we have, uh, when employees retire from uh, positions, that we have a good transition there. And Ed has been in the forefront of this. He, he has worked very hard to make sure that when we have a situation where somebody is going to leave, and it's a particularly senior county employee, that we have somebody that is behind them that has the knowledge and experience and the, particularly the management experience so that they can move into that position so that now we're not placed in a position where we have a, a vacancy and we lose that efficiency that's necessary to make a county government run. It's more important now than it has ever been. Uh, as I said uh, earlier in, in, in the seg segment, uh, with the way uh, things are today in county government and the lack of financial resources we have, we have to utilize uh, our staff uh, to the um, maximum, uh, and that's what Ed has done uh, as far as uh, trying to manage the, the county government. Ed, besides sustainability, one of your goals has always been uh, wellness. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, in 2012, when you came back, you instituted uh, a wellness division, kicked it off, and actually in 2013 opened a wellness center. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the, the wellness program and why um, it's important to Cape May County. 
County? Well, first of all, it's the right thing to do. Uh, it's something that's long overdue uh, across the country. It's happening in almost every major corporation and every business. And unfortunately, it, in the state of New Jersey, we don't see it as widespread as, as, as we'd like it to be or it really should be. Uh, aside from that, I mean, it, the bottom line, it, besides it being the right thing to do, uh, the number one expense in the county budget is health benefits. Uh, one of your strategies for trying to control that or trying to, you know, at least do as best you can is uh, one of the tools is a wellness program. So again, we've implemented this for a number of reasons uh, and we've had an overwhelming response because uh, even though there are some financial consequences that are favorable to not only the taxpayers but to everybody now uh, with the new uh, pension laws and the new health benefit laws. So again, there, it, it was just the right time to do it. <clears throat> the timing was right, everyone's involved, and, and it's really turned out really, really well. And it was important to you that this is an employee uh, wellness program that the employees buy into it, that they participate in the formation of it and the decision process. Why is that important? Well, it's got to come from the grassroots. Anything you're going to do in, in any kind of organization, you want it to come from the grassroots. And we started this process by forming an advisory group of 30 people that represent every union, every bill building every angle that you could possibly think of in county government and that group which was one of the most energetic one of the most uh, enthusiastic group that you would ever want to have the uh, pleasure of dealing with did just a wonderful job at focusing in putting everything together getting the word out and then supporting the program to a degree that you could only hope would uh, fall in place for you now there's a, a number of different benefits to the program. We'll start at the benefits first for uh, for the employees, uh, a wellness program. The employees. What are some of the benefits that the employees can realize from this program? Well, number one, it, 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 we're trying to create an environment where it's fun and it's convenient to make the right choices. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, everyone's stressed out. Everybody's got. Uh, you know, demands on their life and stress and everything like this. But again, if we can create an environment where people want to come to work, they enjoy coming to work, there's options for them to make healthy choices and, and this is part of the, uh, you know, uh, part of the environment, it's going to make for a better workplace for them, a better workplace for everyone involved. Uh, and to the employer, it's, 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 it's going to equate into a happier mm -hmm. employee, more mm -hmm. productive employees. And again, it's just all around the right thing to do. And I'll say, uh, you know, a healthier employee, when, um, when you have healthy choices and you make them and you feel healthier, um, with the county being self-insured, um, there's a lot of cost involved with maintenance drugs and drugs mm -hmm. for diabetes and mm -hmm. different things. A wellness program can help to reduce that. Well, it's everything. I mean, the wellness program is only a small part of the entire uh, process that we put in place for wellness. Uh, but we uh, experimented with over the last year, year and a half, even before I left uh, the first time, and we were amazed uh, that if you gave, if you would did the outreach and the education and you got involved and you educated people on how to make the right decision, what the right decisions are. We saw swings in our numbers by hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Uh, so that's when we realized that, that it was not only, it was a great investment, not only from a financial standpoint, but because it was the right thing to do anyhow. So it was a win-win in almost every way possible. Now, Director, with the county being self-insured and, and each year seeing the cost of, of insurance premiums going up, and as you said, uh, now the employees are, are paying more uh, towards their health insurance, so they have a stake in it financially as well, but also for the taxpayers uh, keeping the cost down, this is important. Well, certainly that, that is certainly one, one aspect, but there's another very significant aspect here about having this wellness program, and I'm going to compliment Ed Grant because I can tell you from the very get-go this was his idea this was his program he came to me and and explained what he wanted to do and I thought to myself gee that really sounds good but I don't know what's, whether it's going to work Ed and he kept with it and and I can tell you what it has really just blossomed I, I, I but the significance is and Ed didn't mention this but along with this wellness program we also have a health screening uh, process so that any employee uh, through the county health department, if they, uh, they with this health screening process, they have their blood pressure taken and their uh, and their heart rate taken and they have their, their sugar test taken and all these type of things. We have discovered now about ten employees that when we took their blood pressure, it was so high and so serious that they told them leave right now 
and either go to the hospital or go to your doctor immediately. Now, these are 10 employees that were at a serious health risk of a stroke or a heart attack just through this process. Now, just what it means to that employee personally and their family, just doing that screening process, which was something at that time I, I didn't consider, but Ed said we'll make it part of the process. And, and the whole thing about the nutritional meals mm -hmm. and these type of things and, and working with uh, Rutgers and the extension service as, as far as the meals and everything, I, I'm really impressed. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really impressed. And the numbers over there have increased so significantly. We must have more than uh, 200 employees right now that are using uh, th this wellness program mm -hmm. and going over and, and going on the treadmills. And another thing, too, it was all done because uh, Murray Health, the insurance company, mm -hmm. financed this with fifty fifty $50,000 grant. $150,000 grant. Just it's mm -hmm. it's wonderful. Well, that was, that's an important piece to stress. We we were going to get that the fact that uh, you created this program um, with a grant from AmeriHealth for one hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and so therefore there's no money out of the the taxpayers coming for this program. Yet there will be benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but as the director said, there's many components of this, and then when you kicked it off in September, uh, mainly with the educational piece and stressing mm -hmm. healthy eating and combining programs that already existed but grouping them together, mm -hmm. like Rutgers Extension Program with mm -hmm. healthy life mm -hmm. uh, eat, eating skills, and right. then with the county library and uh, different health programs. So it's kind of bringing it all together. Well, it, what's really neat about it, it's bringing, when we started this whole process, one of the things the advisory board, uh, their number one, actually we, we did surveys countywide, the number one suggestion on to us as a committee on how we could uh, put together a good wellness program was to take advantage of the resources we already had. And you're absolutely right. As part of this process, it has engaged the entire organization. Uh, back in uh, a few months ago, we had a celebration you know, event there where we were uh, for the cancer, the blue and pink. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to test our communications of this program because, again, one of the basics that we had to do is put a, a good communications process in place. And we did, and that was when we tested it. And we actually had close to six or 700 county employees wear pink or blue mm -hmm. and have their pictures taken, and then they sent them to, to our wellness center, which then told us that we really, it has yeah. blossomed into something really special. Really and we're continuing uh, the program. You opened uh, Wellness Center, so you have an official location that opened in January mm -hmm. where the employees can participate in. Uh, each month uh, they can find out about a new issue. Uh, February was Heart Health Month, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of other things coming. We're just about out of time, but of course um, you have uh, mobile health screenings coming. They're going to be unique. Uh, it's going around with mm -hmm. an RV, uh, also a produce truck. So there are a lot of new ish initiatives mm -hmm. that you're looking forward to this year. Yeah, I mean, one thing we, we you know, we didn't just roll this out and then we, we, we planned it and it's structured in a way where it's going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to add to the program so that it'll keep mo grabbing momentum. So we'll stay up to date on that and for more information about Cape May County, visit capemaycountygov.net. Until next time, I'm Lenora Bonifante. See you on the Cape May County Report. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.